There's a bit of a delay between each ship because I wanted to make sure that uh, when they reach the formation point, I have a variable to check so that they're all at formation. Uh, once they're all at formation, then it'll actually stop and generate the next formation. Uh, that way they're, you know, keeping pace with each other. Hey guys, Space Marine 658 here. Today we're going to be talking about how to create 3D formations. Um, specifically, this is in a space game, but this could work for any kind of game where you need um, a 3D formation. You can also technically use this for 2D formations. Um, you'll just need to make some tweaks and changes to how I actually do this. There's an excellent video that I'll link in the description below um, that basically covers how to do 2D formations in a much better way. Um, so you definitely want to check that out if you're looking for more 2D formations. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So what I've done is I've created this um, data asset here that I've called formation data asset. And this is a very simple um, little bundle of code here. Uh, basically it, it draws from the primary data asset. And this allows you to load and unload assets from the data manager. So inside of here, inside of our um, project settings here. We have our here. So we have our game manager asset manager and basically I've just grabbed this primary asset type of formation data and set it the base class of the formation data asset and then I've linked it to the actual folder where I store that data and so that is actually um, this here this data asset specifically and this is just derived from this C++ class. And so what is the C++ class doing? Basically, it's doing a couple of things. First, we're storing the data type. So this is basically just the formation data. Um, and then this can be, you know, there's a lot of different types of data you can store here. This is just what I'm using here for this primary asset type. And then we're overriding a virtual function called get primary asset ID, where instead of um, the default way that where it returns um, the asset ID, we're actually instead of returning the data type and the F name, um, as part of that asset ID. And then um, inside of here, we are basically, we've got an enum that I've, I've referenced here inside of this class. And that is just this enum here that just has the different formations this data asset can have. And so this is just saying this particular asset, what, what enum does it have? And I've, I've set that up, I'll show you in, in the blueprints. And then we have a display name. So this is just the display name. Um, and then in here we have a generate formation function. This takes in a number of ships and the spacing of those ships, which you can always change and tweak to give you a large amount of control. You can create different functions on top of this. Um, and then you have this formation functions um, category that this falls under and this returns an array of vectors. So there's an array of positions for these ships to get into formation. And then as you can see here, I have a bunch of static functions that are all private. These are just the specific functions. I could always make these public, but I like to have them all fall under the one, and then I just change it based on the enum. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So as we have here, um, we have all of these different functions, and these are the actual formation generating um, code and then inside of that base generate formation um, we actually go ahead and switch based on the formation type and then we get whatever our formation is and then we return the actual vectors this this so basically what happens here is it goes down here it goes okay this is the one we selected it goes return this so then it's going to run this function so it's going to pass in the number of ships and the spacing it's going to come up here. So this is the sphere one. So it's going to come up to the sphere one. And so it's going to pass these in. It's going to generate those formation points, as you can see here. And then it returns those, which then get returned here, and then it breaks. And so what this does is when we go back to our um, fleet manager here, let's go ahead and take a look at our spawn fleet event. I'm going through here. I've got a fleet composition set up. It's a map. It just maps the different classes that I have to a number of ships. And of course I can add more detail to this later if I want, um, make a whole, you know, uh, struct or class setup depending on what I want to do. Um, 
and then I come in here and I generate that formation. So once I've created all these ships and I've decided how many I need to spawn, I come in here, I pass in the number of ships I'm spawning, and then I give it the current formation. And then from here I pass in the spacing, and then that's gonna return to me all those different vectors and exactly where they're gonna be uh, placing those ships. From here, I go through all the different values and keys in our fleet composition, and I go through one by one, and based on the spawn index and on the class return from these keys, I spawn the ships. So I spawn the correct class of ships. And from here, I just add them all to a storage container and array, um, though I can just track, you know, those ships themselves. These are all the managed ships that the fleet manager has access to. And then from here, I pass in the default orders because I can just set the default orders of all these ships. So when they spawn in, they spawn in with the correct um, formation or if they're not in formation, you know, whatever they're currently doing. Um, so what happens here is at the, the very tippy top, we've got our origin point. So this is our get actor location. And then we pass in our ship spacing, which is the fleet controls that ship spacing. And then we also set our flagship. Uh, but at the end of the day, all of this is just to facilitate that formation. So now that we've got, you know, we've got our formation, um, let's take a look at our actual data asset here. Um, so as you saw here, we have our formation types. We've got all this different information. You know, it's getting passed back to the, to the actual fleet manager. So what does this do? Um, this actually handles, and this is technically incorrect here. This, this should just be um, something to the effect of formation um, functions um, but essentially what this data asset does is it stores uh, those different formation types based on that formation data so up here you can see these are different formation um, bits that you have so so you know this is actual formation data and then this is map and primary asset label those are other data assets uh, primary data assets that have been created uh, these are just editor ones that are created by default this is the one that we actually created there. And then in here, it has some settings. So formation type, the wall, point, sphere, cone, B, virus, blob. And then this is the, the one that you can actually change. So within the fleet manager here, um, this current formation is getting that value, the wall or whatever. And so that's why it's generating based off of that enum. Um, but if we go in here, for example, you know, we can actually change um, those orders. So here, for example, I have a button. This is a button that gets displayed inside of the actual screen here. So right here, you see update orders so that at runtime, I can change the orders, hit update orders, and it sends out an update to that fleet manager and updates all the ships. So it just loops through all the main ships and changes those orders so that they have something different. Um, but yeah, so that handles the formation and, and basically this is your biggest thing right here is going to be these different functions. Depending on how you set these up is how you're going to get your different points. Um, the cool thing with this is it gives you a large amount of control because um, let's say instead of passing in the number of ships, um, you instead pass in the actual ship classes. Um, from there, you could create your formation based on ship classes or however you want to set it up. Here I've done a very simple thing where I'm just doing it on the number of ships and spacing. Um, this is mostly meant to be a formation generator for when they first spawn in. Um, the plan is um, once I've got them spawned in, I wanna start controlling the formation based off of a different function. So instead of handling it with generate formation, I can then use a different function um, to actually handle how the formation is created. Um, now that I'll have access to the actual fleet classes. All right, um, and now let's actually show it working in game. Um, so let me go and show off the actual formation generation. So when the, the ships are created and then watch them move in formation as well. So you can see I generated a waypoint and then built off of from that waypoint using those formation distances. There we go. There's a bit of a delay between each ship because I wanted to make sure that uh, when they reach the formation point, I have a variable to check so that they're all at formation. 
Uh, once they're all at formation, then it'll actually stop and generate the next formation. Uh, that way they're, you know, keeping pace with each other. There we go, formation stopped. And there we go, generate the next point. They're all rotating to it based on the delay. Let's start heading that way. Simple as that. Um, but yeah, so that is everything for it today. Just a very simple walkthrough of how I generate those, those formation points and I set those up. Um, if you have any questions, definitely let me know down below, but otherwise, good luck and good hunting.